Hey everyone, it's Patrick from the Babylon JS team. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about anisotropic reflections. What are anisotropic reflections, you say? Well, anisotropy is where a material exerts different properties based on a direction. So, for example, in wood, it's easy to break wood with the grain, but not so much when you break it against the grain. Uh, for a reflection, that means a reflection that stretches based on the directionality of the material that it's reflecting off of. So if you think of brushed aluminum, for example, the reflections are going to stretch based on the scratches on the surface of the brushed aluminum. Uh, another example might be uh, this vinyl record. So this is a very simple scene and we're going to kind of go through how to make this in Babylon today. Uh, it is just a pipe uh, primitive from Maya that has been given a texture and a mesh for the adapter in the center um, and it's using some anisotropic reflections. So the way to tell what an anisotropic reflection is, is you can see in the polished surface of the, the vinyl we're reflecting our studio environment. So the you see the light reflected there and it doesn't move. Now the reflections in the grooves of the vinyl are stretching and moving around. So that those are anisotropic reflections where we're taking the reflection of the light panel and stretching it in a direction around the record. So how do we do that? Well, let me talk about um, the, the properties that control anisotropic reflections in our engine. So it's going to be tangent space of the mesh. It's going to be a direction factor for the anisotropy reflection. And we also have the ability to add a texture to further control it. So Let's break that down really quickly. Uh, what I'm going to show you is the way a pipe is uh, put into Maya by default. So it's brought in into your scene already un UV unwrapped. And when they do the UV unwrap, they slice the face in one area and then they kind of bend it and distort it back into a rectangle. So if I were to draw a line from right to left in the texture, it would actually uh, run around the center of the pipe. So that is, that is one way to UV unwrap the pipe. Um, and the important part here is the lines that you're seeing are the, the tangents for each vertex. And the blue lines represent the Z direction and you can see they're emanating from the center out. Um, and so that tells you the directionality of the tangent in each space. And we're deriving that tangent from UV space. And, and so that, that is how we are assigning the tangent that the anisotropic reflection cares about. The other way to, to unwrap this would be to do a planar projection or a pelt map. So a planar projection uh, pr looks straight at a face. And in this case, I've chosen looking straight down at the top. And uh, what happens to the tangent space is then it becomes all the same tangent space. And you can tell that by looking at those same uh, blue lines, you can see a lot of them are parallel. And basically what's happening is it's saying all of those uh, vertices have this the same tangent space. Um, that becomes important in a, in a minute and I'll talk about why. Um, so why would I, why would I want uh, this unwrap versus this unwrap? So in a uh, planar projection or a pelt map, uh, if you remember on the, the record, there is a label. So creating that label flat in 2D space is a much easier thing to do and apply to a planar projection like this than it would be to uh, slice that label and distort it to unwrap it into a rectangle to put it on this UV space. And so in that sense, this is much more friendly to the use that I have. And so I want to go with this. So there's one other thing to note is if you look at the resolution of this mesh, it is small. It is lower. It's only 720 triangles, whereas this mesh is 1440 triangles. So double. Um, the, this becomes important when we talk about the tangent space for uh, anisotropic reflections. And let me show you why. Uh, let me come back to this guy and I'm going to exit out of this and jump over to this other scene. So this other scene has those two pipes from the, the Maya scene earlier. And the top one is unwrapped as a rectangle. Uh, it's the default unwrap. And the bottom one is unwrapped as pelt map or planar projection. So what happens when I um, when I add anisotropic reflections to these? These are standard PBR metallic rough uh, discs on their material, and uh, it is fully metallic and very low roughness. And so let me grab this uh, this top one, which is the square unwrap, 
And to get to anisotropic reflections, uh, if I come over to the inspector, you can see about halfway down in the inspector of the material, we will find anisotropy and it's right here. Right now it's not enabled. If I enable it, you're gonna see what happens. So right there, uh, just enabling it, you can see the reflections on this disc change dramatically. And I can pull this intensity down so you can see just how it's changing. Uh, basically, we are taking that tangent space, which radiated from the center out, and then we're using that to distort that reflection into these reflection bands. And so that is anisotropic reflection. You can also see we have a direction here, so I could change this direction to maybe one zero or one zero five. Um, and basically what it's doing is it's, it's taking this factor and multiplying it times the tangent space, and that is the final direction that we distort the, the, the anisotropic reflections with. So what happens when I do that to a planar projection surface? Well, let's take a look. Uh, come over here to the planar projection one and down here to anisotropic reflections, and I'm gonna enable it. Now let's roll around and see what happened. Well, not a whole lot happened. Um, let's take this intensity and roll it down and see what actually is happening. Well, there's not a lot happening. With no anisotropic reflection, we get a reflect, uh, a kind of a mirror reflection of the environment. And when I put it all the way on, we still get a mirror reflection of the environment. It's just in a different direction. And why is that? It's because the tangent space is all the same for this, uh, this model. And let me jump down here to our debug. And just to see here, um, let's look at our anis anisotropic tangents you can see it's all the same color. Whereas if I grab this guy uh, and look at our anisotropic uh, tangents, you can see it is emanating from the center out. So that is why we are getting all the distortion on the top one and no distortion on the bottom one. So we need to fix that. So let's go back to none on this and none on this guy. So now we're back to seeing this uh, as uh, a standard render. And now we go back to our anisotropic texture. Now remember I said uh, we take the texture and we build, uh, bake a, dire a direction into the RNG channels. So the RNG channels represent the X and Y direction for the texture. And then the B channel represents the intensity. So I'm going to add this anisotropic texture and I've got one right here that we're gonna use. And boom, there it goes. Now we've got this distortion doing the same thing that the one above it does. So what does that texture look like? So here in our red channel, I just have this radial gradient and it's mimicking what the tangent space was doing in the other mesh. In the G channel, I just used white because I, I it doesn't really matter what direction. Um, I can play with the RNG channels to choose my direction. I could put another radial gradient in here. I could do basically anything I wanted to, and that will affect the directionality of the anisotropic reflections. And so that, that gives me a lot of power to author that. And then in the B channel is intensity. And I just wanted the intensity of one so that we could, we could see this as a very simple example. So let me jump back to the R channel. And you can see uh, we've got this uh, texture mapped one-to-one -to, -one to this surface. And the nice thing is, there are no seams on this texture uh, because of the fact that we did a planar projection. Now for this projection up here, we did a, well, uh, we let Maya's uh, default be the, um, the rectangular unwrap. And what I'm looking for right here is this space right here. What you see is this is the seam in UV space. So basically we have uh, zero and one in UV space and it wraps. So if this is zero and it wraps all the way around to one or vice versa, zero to one, um, we are always going to have a seam from our tangents. And the other thing you can see is there's a lot of striations and the edges of our reflections. Those are actually the resolution of the mesh. So right now, this remember this mesh is about double the number of triangles of this mesh. And so to get rid of that, I actually have to go higher. Um, if I go lower, if it was the resolution of this mesh, those would be very obvious. And so that, that is the, the drawback of uh, un, uh, UV mapping in a rectangle is that um, it does give us these very um, strong anisotropic reflections, 
but it is very dependent on the resolution of the mesh. And so if we can't if we can't add more resolution to the mesh to smooth out our reflections, then we may want to do something where we go to a texture. So great. So now we have a texture. So then let's look at the, the record very quickly. So how, how do we do this? So I'm going to grab our textures and look at our anisotropic texture and let us look at the preview here and let's jump through these channels. So very much like the other one, uh, I have a kind of a radial gradient in the R channel. In the G channel, I have another radial gradient, but it is slightly darker, so it gives a slightly different direction. In the B channel, I have this circular stretched texture. And so what that's doing is that's actually giving us the intensity of the anisotropic reflections around here. Um, that is why we see this uh, stretching the way we see the stretching. Uh, if I were to come back here to the material and let's open up anisotropic and pull this down to zero, you can see that is what the reflection would look like normally. So we do have some normal information here that is distorting the reflection somewhat. But then the anisotropic reflections, when I bring that back up, now we get all of the distortion in the, uh, in the texture. So there's one other part that I'm doing here, and I, I'll show you this really, really quickly. Um, the easiest way to see this is if I turn on our debug again, so you can see the anisotropic tangent space. You'll see the tangent space is actually rotating in the opposite direction of the record. And, and that's one of the things that I did. Uh, it's just a very simple rotation uh, on scene before register. Um, but I wanted to make sure that the reflections looked live. And so that is another trick that I did where I'm just rotating the, the texture angle um, very slowly in the opposite direction. So that is how, that's how we made the, the, the asset. But how would I make this texture? So um, I do want to go through that really quickly so that you can see kind of um, how we might go about making a texture like this. So for example, uh, I started in Substance Designer, and this is a you know pretty standard texturing package. You don't have to use Designer. You can do this in many different uh, packages. This is just the one I happen to use. Um, and so what we're going to look at is I have a couple of different things. Um, I wanted to control the uh, anisotropic reflections to only be within the uh, groove area of the record, which means that I have to create this mask and uh, set the intensity to zero, and I also set the the direction to zero as well. Um, so basically, I took this uh, these circles, multiplied them up, and created this little ring, which represents the uh, the groove area on the record. Uh, multiplied that times all the channels, and that's why I get this um, circular texture at the end. Then for the R channel. Um, I started with a uh, linear gradient and fed it into a gradient map so I could create a bunch of bands of color. And I went from, you know, a dark color to white to black to white. And so uh, that gradient map is then fed through a Cartesian to polar coordinates node. And that Cartesian to polar coordinates node creates that radial blend that we want. Um, and then I blended it by multiplying it with our mask and that goes into the R channel. And then just as a simple uh, modification, I just used a contrast and luminance node to make it just slightly darker, multiplied it with the, the band and put that in the G channel. And then for the B channel, um, I, I will go back over here and it's the same thing. I started with an anisotropic noise, put a blur on it, Cartesian to polar coordinates to create this circular spin uh, distortion and then that becomes our B channel. So then our intensity is all of these uh, radial bands. So then when I go back to our other, our other uh, uh, implementation here, and let me take off this, um, you can see that's what's happening. We've got our directionality um, in these radial gradients coming into a planar projected surface so that we can keep the label very simple. Um, and then the intensity uh, is giving us all of the stretching here. So all of that to say, uh, 
when you're creating a, a anisotropic reflection, whether it's because you want a brushed metal or something like this vinyl record, um, there are a bunch of things you need to take into consideration. One would be, uh, do I want to use a texture? Um, do I have the ability to use a high resolution mesh? Uh, do I want to unwrap in such a way because I have other textures that I need to create? Um, one thing you can you could do is uh, we support multiple UV sets, and so you could unwrap in uh, UV set one with a pelt map and UV set two with a uh, rectangular map, and then that way you could still project the label in UV space one uh, and get the rectangular projection for UV space two, and then you don't have to use an anisotropic texture. Um, there's there's a lot of things you can do to create these assets, uh, but I wanted to go through all of the kind of the groundwork of how we're creating that so that you can understand the trade-offs and um, understand what it means uh, when we see I have a, a tangent direction and a direction factor in anisotropy and an anisotropic texture. How do we connect all of those three to make the anisotropic reflections the way we want? So hopefully that made some sense. Um, you can see the power of anisotropic reflections in the engine, and uh, we would love to see what you do with them uh, in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, we would love to have you along for the journey. Uh, hit the subscribe button below, and if you liked the video or didn't like the video, give us that feedback. Uh, we'd love to know what you want to do next, and we hope you have a great day. Take care.